Okay, Chuck Loaf here again with another batch, another big batch of films. On the quest of the journey to watch 1,200 films and review every one. Well, I know I'm a little behind on my films, but I got a vacation coming up in a couple weeks, so then I won't worry about getting caught up. But uh, on the episode today, I finally got it in. Uh, we got the new Jake Gyllenhaal film, Stronger. Then we got the four horror films I mentioned in the last episode that all had the same kind of synopsis. I'll be reviewing all those films coming up here. And uh, we got a bad movie that gave Colossal a run for its money. And a movie I cannot believe I enjoyed. I feel almost dirty for liking it, but I did. And we'll talk about it here in a bit. And we got our first John Wayne film. So uh, let's get going. Number 126, The Ritual. Uh, Netflix original film about uh, four friends that get lost while hiking. Uh, it gets, you, 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 of course, they has got the one friend that's out of shape, and you got the one friend that gets injured, and the, uh, and the one friend that just wants to continue trekking on because he's in still healthy shape. And, but, uh, they get lost, and then it gets really spookily intense at times. They come upon this old house with all these weird, this weird thing in the attic that looks like a a deer made out of twigs, and it, it's it's a lot better than that last Blair Witch movie. I'll say that it succeeded where Blair the last Blair Witch went wrong. But yep, good film. I recommend the Ritual. One twenty seven, the new Jake Gyllenhaal film, Stronger. Uh, he plays uh, the man, a man that lost his legs in the Boston Marathon bombing a couple years ago. If you remember that, I'm sure you do. Uh, kind of depressing at times. He's kind of down in the dumps for a good chunk of this film, but uh, eventually kind of righted itself and became fairly inspiring. I would probably put this just barely in my Jake Gyllenhaal top ten. Probably just. Above Brothers, maybe. Definitely better than Day After Tomorrow. Definitely better than Enemy. Not quite as good as Source Code. Kind of in that mix. But there was one part where I had to laugh because it's a little ridiculous. So he's got, he's, he's sitting there with his, he's got no legs. He's got his little stubs down there. And he's sitting in the passenger side of the car and the car stops and he just gets up. Opens the car door and gets out of the car like he's just going to walk away. And then he falls on his face. Like, really? You really thought you could just get up and walk? You got stubs. But yeah, still still not a bad movie. Um, This one. God, this was bad. Deliver Us from Eva. You're probably asking, why the hell did I watch Deliver Us from Eva? Hey. Black History Month. Why shouldn't I? Plus, I gotta prep myself for all these Medea movies I gotta watch, so I figured this would be a good start. So, this group of guys, they all have their girlfriends slash wives, and uh, all the women are getting advice from Eva. She's kind of like a evil version of Oprah. She has all their advice for them, and then uh, all the guys don't like what she has to say. So they they think if uh, they hook Eva up with a man, that that'll get Eva out of their hair. So in comes LL Cool J, and I swear to God, if I see LL Cool J lick his lips one more time, every time he talks. <laughs> Hey girl, how you doing? Girl, you looking good. <sighs> this film had one one good laugh, which kept it from being the worst film. A couple giggles and, and lots of groans. <sighs> A little spoiler here: the, the 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 guys that didn't like Eva, they. Didn't like LL Cool J after a while either, so they figured it'd be a good idea to kidnap him. You know how many years in prison you get for doing that? Even the conspiracy to kidnap is like three years. 
Yeah, this was bad. Then It, It finally came in. Stephen King's It. Uh, looking forward to this for a long time. Uh, not overly scary, as I was hoping it would be, but still intense. The guy that played the clown, whatever the heck his name is, he did an excellent job. He's no Tim Curry. But uh, after watching this film, it's, it's like how you feel after eating a really good meal, a good hearty, meaty meal. Like, mm, that's good stuff. That's how I felt after watching it. And I'm looking forward to the sequel, which it was this film set up nicely for. 130, The Covenant. This is like a Twilight Light film. And it's about one fifth as good. Uh, these four dudes have these special powers that they inherited from their fathers. Then this other dude moves into town, and he's also got these special powers. And but he wants all the powers. So he wants all the powers from the other guys. And there's this side love story, and it's bleh. this whole film is bleh. one thirty one five flights up. Definitely a movie to watch with your mother or just let her watch alone. This movie wasn't a whole lot going on. Morgan Freeman, Diane Keaton. You gotta love seeing those two. They play an interracial, interracial couple who uh, have been living in this apartment for 40 some years. And they're ready for change. And they're ready to sell their apartment. Cynthia Nixon, uh, I believe it's Cynthia Nixon, plays the, the real estate agent who's trying to sell their place. And at the same time, they're looking for a, a new place to live, and that's basically this whole film. That's what it is. Yep. Uh, number 132, another film you could watch with your mother. Fried Green Tomatoes. Chances are she's already seen this, so don't even try to bring it up. Uh, Kathy Bates is in a bad marriage. And then she kind of makes this friendship at the hospital with uh, Jessica Tandy who starts telling her these stories from way back when the the, the flashback stories are, are are okay but the the real time stuff with the Kathy Bates is really bad and if there's about one too many vagina references to I could have done without that but yeah 133 this was the first of the four horror films I mentioned in the last episode that all had the same kind of synopsis. This is The Presence. Three friends go to a castle. This is all in French subtitles, too. Uh, they go to a castle, and uh, things start going bump in the night. And then there's a lot of camera shaking and a, a lot of random loud noises. and Zero substance to this film. Skip at all costs. 134, Extinction. So all these, so pretty much everyone turns into a zombie, except for uh, Matthew Fox from Lost and the guy from Burn Notice and his daughter. So they end up kind of becoming neighbors. They kind of got their whole place fenced off, and uh, they're pretty much just living out their lives because they don't really, everyone else is a zombie, and they kind of moved on, and it's, in a cold area. But then Matthew Fox goes on a food excursion and he's and then a zombie pops up and he's like a jacked up snow zombie, I guess. And like, whoops, there there's there's still zombies, so they have to fight them off, and of course more zombies show up and they've kind of adapted to the cold. So they gotta deal with that. It's not a bad, not a bad movie. Uh one thirty five Wonderlust. This is a documentary about the history of road movies. Paul Rudd and some other guy uh, produced this, and they started it. It uh, starts all the way back from Grapes of Wrath back in the 30s, all the way up until about 2002 with About Schmidt. Because I think this movie came in at about 2004, 2005, so that's, that was the latest big road movie. But uh, it definitely gave me some ideas for some movies to watch. Grapes of Wrath being one of them. 
So uh, you can look forward to that. Um, 136, War for the Planet of the Apes. The final in the trilogy of the recent Planet of the Apes series. I have thoroughly enjoyed this series. The last one I thought, uh, the what was the last one? The Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I thought that was the better of the three. But they're all really, really good. The only problem with this one is the little girl. You're telling me these big giant apes who are fighting for their lives are going to take on this little human girl and worry about protecting her? Really? Other than that, great movie. Yep. Uh, 137. Then she found me. Helen Hunt. This movie. Helen Hunt is going through a divorce with Matthew Broderick. And then she finds out that superstar Bette Midler is her mother. And then she starts dating Colin Firth, who's a single father of two young children. This is like a middle-aged date movie. This, this is what your aunt and uncle should be watching. Um, 138, Company Men. I don't know how I missed this movie. Ben Affleck. This came out like four or five years ago, too. Ben Affleck was fired during the big market crash of a couple years ago and uh, has to go find a real job. So he ends up getting construction work with his wife's father, played by Kevin Costner. And then uh, then he's he's in the risk of not making any money anymore, so he's risk of losing his house and losing his livelihood. And then there's a little side story with his old co-worker, Chris Cooper, who is always nice to see Chris Cooper. Great little actor. So yeah, but not a, not a bad little movie. 139, King... K E A N E King. This guy's daughter is kidnapped at a train station. So, for the next, I guess, year or so, he spends almost all his free time at the train station, kind of retracing his steps, trying to figure out what went wrong and how he, the daughter went missing. And uh, then he starts doing drugs and he's bathing in the bathrooms of the station. Then he's fornicating with hookers and. Eventually, he kind of starts to clean up his act. He befriends this woman who has a young daughter, played by Abigail Breslin of Little Miss Sunshine fame. And then uh, it gets it's strange but interesting. A little slow at times, but it's it's not a bad watch. 140 Strayed, the second film of the four horror films that all had the same synopsis. This is All these four films were in subtitles. I did not know that. This was in Spanish subtitles. And second verse, same as the first. Uh, as his friends go to a haunted locale and it's a, things start happening. It's less less a camera shaking and less loud noises, but it's uh, otherwise the same exact film. Then the third one of the four of the horror films with the same synopsis, The Secret of Evil, also in Spanish subtitles, third verse, same as the first, same as the second. Only difference, it's four people this time instead of three. And you know when you find a dead baby in the wall, things are going bad. It's going to be a bad night for you. And, uh, none of these three so far were any good. Uh, especially this one. Oh, <laughs> then the movie, I can't believe... I enjoyed, but I did. 142, My Friend Dahmer. A lighthearted look at the awkward teenage years of serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> uh, side story, I had a friend once who had a female roommate who went to school with Jeffrey Dahmer. And when I asked her about it, she was like, yeah, we rode the bus together. Wow. The opening scene of this film is Jeffrey Dahmer on the bus going to school. I thought, how cool is that? But uh, this was uh, based on a book written by Jeffrey Dahmer's high school friend, his pal. And, and uh, 
Dahmer made friends by acting completely ridiculous and handicapped, and his, his, his eventual friends thought that was entertaining, so they kind of let him join the group. And that's what this is about. And of course, in his free time, he's killing small animals and dissecting them and working his way up to being a killer. But it's fascinating. It's it's interesting watch. Uh, 143, The Babysitter, a Netflix original. Excellent horror comedy. It's hard to make that genre work, but it works here. Uh, this 13, 14-year-old boy who still has a babysitter, and she's a little, I don't know, weird. She's a little overly friendly, but... uh. And she, uh, then she puts the kid to bed, and then she invites all her friends over, and that's when all the strange things happen. But yes, it's a fun, fun journey. Uh, 144, <laughs> Harry Potter. Oh, Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets. I had seen the first Harry Potter 17-some years ago, so... Finally got to the sequel here at the Chamber of Secrets. <sighs> There's a chamber in the Hogwarts, and they gotta find it. And there's a monster down there. A lot of whippity doo, bickety bam. They waving this wand around, and <sighs> it was fine. I got through it. I don't know what much else to say about it. The, his his Harry Potter's guardians at the beginning are kind of douchebags. I can't believe he puts up with that. But, uh, yeah, it was all right. 145, our first John Wayne movie from 1936. I checked to see how old John Wayne was during this film. He wasn't even 30. He was a baby in this. He was, he didn't even have the, hey, Pilgrim, Ringer, Ringer. He's, he's like a like a high voice, a young person's voice. But uh, it was called Stagecoach Run. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, it was it was interesting, fine, basic little western. Uh, he buys this uh, trail to run his stagecoaches on, and then he finds out the trail that it goes to and from is basically from a, a town with nobody left in it. There's a mayor and there's a doctor and. He realizes he's been had, so he kind of works his way to building the town back up so he can make a profitable run at the stagecoach business. And then there's a big race at the end with the stagecoaches. Some of these stunts were a little dangerous, folks. Sometimes there's, these horses are going almost directly straight downhill with people on the horses pulling a stagecoach. That seems a little dangerous. Then there was a scene where John Wayne was confronting someone, and he was on a horse, and there was a like a ten foot drop straight down, and he just kind of just goes straight down with the horse, and he didn't hurt himself. Wow, one bad little flip, and the horse would have been right on top of him, and there would have been no more Duke. That would have been the end of him. But yeah, it was it was fine. I'll be watching more John Wayne movies. One forty six. The Hunted, there was 5,000 movies with the same title. It's not the Tommy Lee Jones movie from 15 years ago, and it's not the Christopher Lambert movie from 20 years ago. This is the 2014 version. Uh, it's very, very loosely based on a true story. It's about this uh, hunter, bow hunter. He's, uh, he's filming a show out in the woods. So it can be picked up by a network so he can do his own hunting show. And while the him and the cameraman are out there, they start hearing these screams and wails. And uh, they don't know, they figure it's an animal or a bobcat, but eventually they learn it is a, it's a human screaming, and but they can't figure out where it's coming from. And each night they go out, the screaming gets closer and louder and scarier and kind of picks up from there. But, uh, very intense movie. This is how you do more with less. Perfect example right here with this film. Highly recommend The Hunted, 2014. 
147, another Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Good old Geary Oldman pops up as Sirius Black. The <laughs> First he's scary, then all of a sudden they're friends, and he's the godfather, and he invites Harry to go live with him, and yeah. And we're supposed to get excited just because Harry Potter gets a new broom. Really? But other than that, it's colorful and fast-paced, even though it's a little long. It's still a watchable, watchable movie. I'll be watching the rest of them eventually. 148, the fourth and final film of the four horror films that all had the same synopsis. Archivo 253. This was the best of the four. This was uh, group of four. I uh, go to a haunted uh, old sanitarium. And instead of trying to do too much, they kept it simple. Instead of trying to scare you with loud noises and shaky cameras, they made it real subtle, eerie. A lot of quiet times. You don't know what's gonna gonna go on, and then, and then they they time it just right with the scares. So, that being said, this genre is getting tired. I'm getting tired of these cheaply made found footage films. But this one was the best of the four. If you're big into horror films, I guess I recommend this one. One forty nine girlfriends day. Bob Odekirk. He writes messages on greeting cards, and he's he's been in a slump, and he gets fired, and he owes the land, his landlord money, so his landlord starts selling his stuff. But he's, uh, then the mayor of the town annou announces it's going to be a girlfriend day, and there's a big contest to write the best greeting card for Girlfriend's Day, and Odekirk sees this as his big chance to get back on the map, so to speak. It's not a bad time filler. Other than that, I wouldn't recommend. Number 150, Doe. D-O-U-G-H, Doe as in bread dough. This elderly Jewish man is, runs a kosher deli. And uh, his young apprentice quits on him, so he's desperate to find a new one. And he takes on this young Muslim kid. And uh, <laughs> the kid starts selling drugs out of the store as they're selling their kosher bread and stuff. So you can get two rolls of bread and then a dying bag of marijuana. And when the elderly Jewish man finds out about this, he's not a happy camper. And then it kind of goes from there and it ends up being kind of a cute little film. This was a Leonard Maltin recommendation. So it wasn't bad. Ah, uh, that's, that's it for this one. Uh, upcoming, we got a David Duchovny movie called The TV Set I'll be watching, and then we got one called Salt, and then hopefully I'll have Blade Runner in shortly, and then um, <laughs> I was looking at my Amazon movies, and Amazon Prime movies to watch, and there was one on there called The Last Word, I noticed, I looked at it and noticed, I said, wait a minute, that sounds familiar, I just got that in from my Netflix DVDs, a movie called The Last Word, I thought, oh, shoot. I got a movie in DVD that I could have watched on streaming. I try to go out of my way to avoid that. Then I look at the description and notice the descriptions of the movies were different. Then I noticed the years were different. So indeed, they are different movies. So I'll be watching two different films with the same title, The Last Word. So we have all that fun to look forward to, and I think that's it. So we'll talk next time.